All right, so hopefully you can see that chart. Looking okay to everybody? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay, so it's October 21st. John and I are here again uh, with Marie to help us with the, with the Zoom. And uh, I guess this is our seventh get together, if you guys can believe it. Unbelievable. Time's going by. So anyways, welcome again to everybody. Um, Bill McDonald's a, a new face to us here tonight. So welcome, Bill. Um, we have, I think, 53 people now that are signed up to be part of our little group. And uh, generally, we've been getting kind of uh, 20 to uh, 35 on these Zoom calls. And I think Murray will tell us that uh, a lot of others of our group and outside our group in the public are making use of the uh, YouTube videos, right, Mary? That's right. We're running about five to six hundred every month. Wow, that's really good. So we'll we'll just continue on. Just as a reminder, what what we're doing here is talking about caricature carving and um, trying to introduce people to caricature carving. And for those that have been at it for a little while, try to um, learn some new skills. Um, John and I tend to do most of the uh, most of the. If, if you want to call it instruction or presentation, but everyone is welcome to, uh, to ask questions, uh, have comments as we go. Uh, it really is hopefully going to more, be more of a discussion than a, a tutorial. And uh, John and I have always said that it would be nice to get to the point where, you know, one of the other participants other than John and I would, uh, would take on a little blurb and maybe uh, present something for 15 minutes or 20 minutes at these sessions. So if you have something that you do that uh, you think uh, the rest of the group would, um, would uh, learn from, then just let, uh, let me know. You can email me and uh, John and I talk regularly and we'll make sure that you're on the agenda as well, okay? Um, so we're gonna open it up um, with just general questions or comments for, for uh, John and I, based on the things that you've seen in the last seven uh, episodes that we've had here. So any question or comment is valid. We have a lot to talk about in terms of the showcase of the project. So, uh, you know, we've done a number of projects together and you've uh, individually done a number of um, projects on your own in caricature carving. And John, at our last session, introduced the uh, the um, the Santa or the uh, you know Father Christmas, and so many of you have started on that. Some of you have finished one, and uh, you've sent photos in for, to me, which I've put in this presentation. So we'll get to those and go through them. Um, John and I will comment on them as we go, and if others want to comment on it, that's great. The comments are really. Um, supposed to be additive. It's not criticism in any way. We're all in different places in our kind of learning curve. And, uh, and, and our comments hopefully help you gain a little bit more of an advantage uh, based on what John and I have gone through and what others have gone through in the, in the call and what we've learned along the way. So we'll go through a showcase of projects. Um, the last thing I wanna do is when I show you the, the, uh, the uh, Santa Claus that I did, I added a Christmas stocking. He's holding a Christmas stocking and it was a lot of fun to do, a very simple carving, something you can put a lot of detail into. And it struck me afterwards that it would also make a nice little, um, a nice little uh, ornament for the Christmas tree, small ornament for the Christmas tree. So I put a few slides together on that as well. And, uh, and we'll take a look at that and hopefully you can see that as something you might want to try. Very, very quick carving. In fact, uh, Peggy got on the phone with her mother when I started carving and I finished the carving before she got off with the phone with her mother. Now, Peggy does talk a long time on the phone with her mother, but nonetheless, it was a pretty quick carving. So we'll show sounds, you that as well. That sounds like my house too, so. Yeah, yeah. okay, no that's right. So, uh, so that's what we're planning to do tonight. Um, and so we'll just kind of open it up to the floor if there's any general questions or, or comments you'd like to make as we go here. Okay, John, did you want to make any comments or is that good to go? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I'm ready to go. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the things I did, John, was I left the slides in that you used last time. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I don't want you to have to go through in the detail that you went through last time, but I thought that before we started showing some of our efforts, 
you might want to just touch like 10 seconds on each slide just to remind people the steps you took. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, so why don't you go ahead, I'll shut up and I'll just click through these for you. Okay, it's uh, our, one of our first uh, meetings we had was about drawing. And this is the same technique that I used that I uh, showed you guys how to do a drawing, uh, the, the circles. And I made a simple little Santa Claus <clears throat> drawing. And directional of the, the grain. That's very, very important. You want the grain for the nose to be in that direction uh, for the strength. And doing a little bit of uh, preliminary uh, marks to show where I want my hat and the brim, the face. Just an idea where I want everything to show up. And there again, same thing. Little preliminary sketches on the wood. Two by two by eight. Here's the rounding of the hat. And making the hat. I completed the hat. It's all rounded and... Um, there's no straight lines. It's all round. It's all moving. Looks like it's uh, fluffy and stuff. So same thing. I put the nose in at that time. At that, this point, I started adding the nose, cutting it away, and putting the face in and getting the eyes ready to carve in. And little preliminary cuts on the beard. I rounded out the nose here and rounded out the mound for the, the mustache. Got that ready. And put the eyes in at that point. Carve the beard, getting that, uh, following the lines again. And the body, uh, putting the hands in the, the hands in the, the in the pockets and uh, getting that roughed out. And I'm starting to add some detail now. That's where the all I use personally, I use is a knife. So anybody can use every tool you want, but this is what I use. I, I only stick with the knife so that I can take it anywhere I want to go. I don't need a bunch of tools. But I uh, there's a detail of the mustache, detail on the uh, eyebrows, and uh, starting to make it look like a beard and making it look fluffy and how the hair goes. Now I did a little bit of wood burning. And um, a little more detail on the mustache and all that little hair. Did all that. And same thing. More detail and oh, getting ready sorry. for paint. Sorry, John. Yeah. yeah, getting ready for paint. That's about it. Okay. More so any burning. okay? Any questions or comments for John on just that quick review? If you've given that a try. Quick question. Yep. How do you make Santa? How do you make Santa smile? It seems every time I go to make it, he ends up being kind of a, a grumpy looking guy. <laughs> well, you got to draw in the smile. Well, the mustache is curls up, so the the top of the mustache, yeah, right there is is has to go. You're losing a lot of your your uh, cheek when you put that mustache up, and you got to yeah, right there that that go, that goes away a bit, and you put. That's where the mustache is now. So you want to, yeah, yeah, cut yeah, so that away, and that'll be a mustache now. Yeah. So and that's so this, how you get it to smile. You bring right, it up. So, so instead of this here ending up here, John. Yeah, it would curl, go up higher. It curls up, right? Yeah. It curls up, and and it has a lot to do with the eyes too, doesn't it, John? Yeah. Yeah, and the brow. Yeah. Yeah. So a smiling eye tends to, the brow tends to go up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And you're more, you're like, even you just look in, you got to get a look in the mirror too. Look in the mirror, so grab a little hand mirror and look in the mirror when you smile and your eyes squint a little bit, you know, your, your goes up a bit, squint and, you know, and just look, you got, you got to have a little mirror in front of you. Hope that answered your question there, Kev. Okay, Thanks. so, so it, let's I'll start looking at. Let's start looking at some of the projects. So this is John's. This is uh, John's model for us after, after the painting. So John, do you want to just talk about uh, what you did from a painting standpoint quickly? Yeah, I just, um, uh, a very basic red color. I, I 
I uh, didn't do too much highlighting or uh, shadowing or anything. I just made a basic white and red. And, um, and the skin tone is, uh, is the oil finish that I make. I use a uh, min wax oil. <clears throat> and uh, I put sparkles. There's a sparkle paint that I put on top. That helps it, uh, just brings it to life, I think. Yeah. Talk about the, uh, the face paint again. I, I know you've met, you've said, you told me that a few times. I've, I've yet to try it. So you take min yeah. wax. It's a, uh, yeah, it's wood finish, penetrating stain, natural 209. Natural. Okay. Yeah. Natural 209. And you add a little bit of uh, like an inch or inch and a half of oil paint which would be uh, a burnt sienna. Okay. And then you John, mix you that in. That, John, just hold that to the screen with the label I can't see it. so we can see it. Can you see it now? I can't see it. I can't see the screen. A little closer. Yeah, yeah it can come closer. That's good right there. So hold it there and keep talking. Yeah, so that's the can of stain that I use. And that's what I use for the face. That's so the, when, you, skin when, you say, when you say you put the the artist oil paint in there. Did you say burnt sienna? Yeah. Okay. And I, uh, and, and I and stir so, it around so I get a okay. screwdriver. Okay. And so that becomes your go-to can of face paint then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah. when and then, you, uh, go ahead. When you put that on the face, like, am I seeing in this picture that you can still see the grain of the wood? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's a light, uh, light skin tone. Yeah. And um, the cheeks, like after I stain it, the face itself, then the cheeks and the nose, I add a little, little bit of red paint on the brush, or, uh, acrylic paint, and I um, dry brush the cheeks and the nose uh, red. Is the oil still wet at that point? Yeah, it's within a few minutes. I can, okay. You can do that. Okay. And where the sometimes I put a midnight blue underneath the eyes. Yeah. I ran out of midnight blue, so I don't have any. I can't find any around here. Yeah. But that's that's my go to for shadow. Yeah. Uh, another the eyes. another go to another go to John for shadow under the eye, and to to uh, give you the effect of a beard. The color is Payne's gray. Yeah. 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 Stains gray is, is yeah, it's kind of like a dull, dull light blue. Yeah, yeah. That creates like a, a five a five o'clock shadow type thing. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, that's really great. Okay, so yeah, everybody should try that skin tone because it. Uh, yeah. It looks real. Like it looks like real skin. You know. It really, it really does. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's look at a few um, carvings. Uh, Craig, you're on, aren't you? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, why, why don't you just talk about your carving and and, uh, and what you did to produce that? Well, um, uh, JP gave us the height of the hat and the brim, but he didn't give us the height of the face. And I had to draw that in about 17 times before I got it <laughs> looking right. <laughs> and really maybe good. he purposely did that so that it make you think about it but <laughs> other than that i uh, i didn't have any questions i have a, a basic question i wanted to ask you guys when you're using um a gouge i find sometimes you're you're going along and all of a sudden you hit a soft spot and your gouge takes off like a rocket and you, you chop off a nose or something yeah uh, <laughs> Yeah. How do you control a gouge to just go where you want it to go? Do you, do you have palm gouges? Yes, I do. Well, I don't know if you can see. Uh, I can't see my picture, but uh, can you see my hand? Back it up to your chest. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. You got you to gotta have that palm. It's a, it's a palm gouge, right? So you got to have it deep in your hand. You know, and... And just the just the tip is what you're is what you're carving with, and that that you get more control if you have it way out here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but if you have it way out here, you got no little control. But if it's deep in your palm, a little control, I'm just taking a little bit at a time off. 
if you can see that. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Okay, I can't see what I'm doing, but but if you do stay like this, and just a little bit at a time. But if you have it out here, there's less control. Yeah, that's what I how I have it. Yeah, yeah. So I always have it here. Yeah, that's, that's how good. I do. That's Mark, you got any ideas? No, I, I think that's really good advice. The, the only thing I'd add to it is, uh, Craig, when you're using your gouge, even a small gouge like John's using. You don't have the same feel on the wood as you would with a knife. It, it, I don't know. I think there's a little more sensitivity with a knife. So you've got to watch the grain direction. So if you're using the, gou the gouge in kind of an arcing fashion, you're going to find yourself going up the grain, across the grain, and then down in the opposite direction. And you got to watch that because when you change cutting in grain, you're going to get different depths of cut. So you really got to watch that. So that's where I think it's really important where John's saying, if it, you know, you're just using the tip and that gouge is really resting on your finger and your fingers running along the carving, your finger is almost a depth gauge. So regardless yeah. of what happens with the grain, it's not going to get any further than, than your fingers allowing it. You, you know how, um, how a carpenter plane looks, right? Flat on the bottom with the, with the, with the, um, the, the, the knife the, chisel, the knife edge the chisel edge down it, you're yeah. kind of doing that with your hand the way john's holding it you're not allowing that gouge to go any deeper than your than your finger is allowing it and so regardless of what direction grain you hit it's not going to go any deeper you're going to skate along it i, got, I find like, when i'm uh, digging in now say if i slip that's it like mark was just saying this is as far as it's going to go so you can see it or not that's as far as it's going to go. I can have my other thumb here. If I really want to do something, you know, detail, I can go like this. But it's as far as it's going to go is this right there. It's not going to go across. Yeah. And, and I guess the other thing is, as we, we say every, every one of these sessions about everything, it really comes down to the sharpness of the tool as well. So if your yeah, gouge sure. is, is razor, razor sharp, you're, you're going to have complete control over it. If it's dull and starts skating along the wood, it's, it's going to be sloppy. You're going to have a hard time controlling it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, no, my, my gouge is pretty sharp. Yeah, good. So listen, I, I think, you know, John's going to say a few words, but I think this was really good. Um, the, w when, I, when I looked at this, I thought, well, you know, that's, that's exactly the Father Christmas. It's, it's interesting that you talked about the length of the head, but the length of the head doesn't detract it's from perfect. it in any way. Yeah, I think it looks yeah. really good. The, um, the one thing I do notice, Craig, is this here little ball of yarn. It's, you know, you know, you probably would have wished that that was a little more spherical, but you ran out of wood. And, and it's not uncommon to run out of wood when you're, when you're making a, a, a caricature carving like this. And one of the things that I've done when I found myself in that situation is I just flatten that out. I completely flatten it out and I stick another piece, I glue another piece of wood to it. And you, you remember how we used that lead process of you lead one side of the wood, press it against, keep going back and forth and trimming it. You can bring those two pieces right in to laminate them like it was one piece of wood if you did that. And so that, that's something I've done often on carvings is when I've run out of wood in a certain direction, I'll just add another piece on and then carve on. And then, you you know, with that, if you were to do that on this uh, when you were, you know, prior to painting, you would have gotten more of a ball there like this. And, and you may have may have liked that, right? Hey, he still can do it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, oh, yeah, no problem. It doesn't look bad right now. I mean, it, it, it looks really good, but that, that might have been something that, uh, you know, as you think of the next one you do, if I run out of wood, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to glue another piece on. That looks really good. Uh, that's great idea. Yeah. Thank and you. I like how you have the, br the rim, the brim, where it's a nice uh, detail on the brim looks good. Nothing yeah, flat, yeah. nothing straight. Looks good. That's exactly what I was about to say. There's nothing flat on this carving. I mean, it's really curved all the way around. It it, it looks yeah, like you thought it, you thought it through. Yeah, yeah. Good job. These are yeah. probably the best eyes I've ever done. Thanks to you two guys. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we'll look here. Like you clearly listened to John. Look how far that eye is back from the bridge of the nose. Perfect. It is perfect. Yeah, because you know you you just feel your nose the touch the bridge of your nose and then go back to yeah, you go quite a distance, right? And that's exactly what you did there. And I, and as John pointed out many times, when you want to, 
when you look at the side of the sculpture, you want to see that eyeball. You don't want to just see a flat disc there. So, so you aced that. Okay, any other comments for, uh, for Craig? Okay, Bob, uh, you, you sent uh, these two photos in. You, you wanna comment on that and, and how you went about this? Yeah, I just uh, tried to follow you guys' uh, example and uh, just worked, but I guess I could made the nose a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, uh, again, did you run out of wood there, Bob? Is that why the nose isn't bigger? Oh, your, your sound's off, I think, Bob. You want to hit your space bar, Bob? We can't hear you. There you go. Okay, the, uh, I did run out of wood. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, you know, maybe the same comment, uh, you know, in this sculpture, if you, if you find yourself in a you know, you know, and, and we make mistakes too when we carve, right? We we cut off an ear or we cut off a nose. It, that's okay. You know, the the finest wood carvers around the world will admit to gluing on another piece of wood. So, you know, think about that lead process again, that lead pencil process, so that you get that thing really laminated close, so that when you're when you finally have the glue dry, you don't have a seam there, and you can build that up again. You could have built that up again if you wanted to. Um, on, the, on this one, you did a really good job of following uh, John's example. I noticed, and it's hard to tell from a photo, but I noticed this line looks pretty straight. So only you'd know, Bob, by looking at it, if, if that's a little bit more rectangular than you were hoping to get. And, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and talk about that when I, when I show you the one that I did, because that's a real challenge for all of us, is to, is to, is to get that you know, as John put it, no flat surfaces on a carving. It's really difficult to do. You know, as, as carvers, you know, you look at something and, and you see it in two dimensions and to try to turn that into three dimensions takes a lot of practice. And, uh, you know, you've done a good job of, of rounding, especially down here, but you could see, I see on this hat, that looks pretty 90 degree angle there. And, and you may have been able to take off a corner there and bring the, bring a little bit more roundness to it. Just a thought. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. John, you have any comments? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I right now, like when you uh, when you're, do you see this here, the carving? Yep. Okay. This is a side profile. Before, like, uh, what you have to do when you do um, start out roughing out the carving. You don't want to say if you did, like I see the nose here with, with Bob's here, I think you didn't go that far deep into the head for the nose. See, if you would have went a little bit further in, that nose wouldn't be so, the face wouldn't be so flat. So when, when you start out, like don't go past this uh, part of the carving until you have it deep enough. So when see, you what say, happens, the, the thing you're talking about is, is right up at the top near your brow, right, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you can't, if you can't, um, let me see if I get another piece of wood here. Uh, do I have one? <laughs> I don't have one ready or handy. That's so anyway, but just um, when you're doing your rough out, when you do the rough out, make sure you go deep enough into the into the head, uh, and don't jump to the next spot, next uh, step, until you have that finished. You have that. Uh, like that. Yeah. So here, here's if you another... jump, if you go to the next step, you go too fast, then you, you lose your, 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 um, your, you don't have the depth that you want. You don't have the, the nose is not sticking out as far. That's all I want. So here's another example, John, of what you just described. Yeah. So everybody can see that. I'll just put it against my back. Make sure you can see that notch that John was just describing right there, how deep it is. That's about the only way that you can get any in uh, angle on this nose, right? Like to, to get your nose to stick out like that, you have to dig in deep this direction. And, um, and, I, and I can tell you, and I think John would say the same thing, um, you know, often, uh, you know, I'll approach a carving like that, especially the face, and I'll be so timid, you know, I don't want to take too much wood yeah. off, of, you know, I don't want to take too much off of here. 
And so because I know that that's a tendency of mine, what I've started to do is just gouge that portion of the nose out, you know, to the point where when I look at it, I think, oh, I screwed that up. You know, I, I've messed this up. But by gouging it out to that point, you've committed yourself now to making it look right. And as, and as John was saying, you know, you can imagine here with, with your carving as an example, if you had, you know, if you had just been like me and say, okay, I'm going to gouge this out and you gouge that in, you know, uh, three sixteenths of an inch. Now, all of a sudden, you forced yourself to make a, a narrower head because the eyes have got to go back there and all the rest of it. But, but, you know, that's what I found has worked for me is that I just go for it, make the gouge, and then you're committed to fixing it, right? Uh, like I, I would suggest, Bob, if you grab a stick and just do that same thing over and over, just make this part, you know, just do that three, three steps and get confidence, build, build up some confidence. And then you'll just go bang, bang, you know, it's done, you know, you one or two cuts and you know, you have that nose protruding out far enough. Just takes uh, time and uh, a little practice. confidence. Yeah, a little practice. practice. That's Practice. good, Bob. Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay, Fertis, you showed us this one before, but why don't you uh, talk about it again, and then I have uh, your latest in progress one on this slides too. Yes. So this one, I, I just kind of uh, on Instagram and Facebook when I look at stuff. Uh, there's a there's a person I follow. His name is Alex Joiner. He does Santa, Santas yeah. all the time. So I got the the kind of inspiration from his uh, his work mm -hmm. and I kind of just tried my own uh, dimensions and kind of tried to make make it look uh, proportion uh, proportionally uh, good and just went at it and it turned out okay oh, <laughs> it I was like an heard. eight inch by two inch uh, square yeah. block bass I used. yeah yeah very nice true. Yeah, it's better than okay. It's it's a really a nice carving. Thank yeah. you. You know, so so John, you, you you would you like to make some comments, John? No, it's um, he's well on uh, he's on his way. You know, like you just oh, yeah. practice like everybody else. Practice, yeah. practice. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. I, I like all the detail in the hat. It looks ruffled. It looks good. Like, uh, uh you you did well. Yeah. Thank you. You know, yeah. Beard I really looks... like I really like the wrinkles up here. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, just the roundness of everything is, you know, really well done. Like even in the yeah. center here where that robe is, that inner robe is, it's, it looks round, curved as well. It's not flat in any yeah. way. That, it looks really sharp. Yeah, behind the, underneath the arms, it's, you know, it looks like it, like, uh, it's bellowing out a little bit, you know. Yeah, looks yeah, good. looks good. Okay, and this is your latest, uh, Fertis. Yeah, so I did the same thing. I kind of looked at Alex's uh, one of the designs, and this block of wood I I picked is uh, is three inches wide by uh, two inches deep and eight inches. Uh, so I'm still working on it. Um, I did a little bit more than the picture that I told you. Do. So you know, it's uh, it's work in progress. Hopefully, by within the week or so, I should be able to finish it. Nice. And, uh, nice. I should send you some pictures on that. Oh, good. Yeah. You have a bandsaw? I just bought one, uh, the model that uh, uh, Mark recommended, the King Canada one. So it's, I just picked it up mm -hmm. a week ago and it's sitting in my garage. I have to still assemble it. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so this was a lot of work to just uh, cut away the wood. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, you, the bandsaw would take a lot of that. Like you're drawing on the left hand side. I, I would just. Take the bandsaw when you get the bandsaw going, you know, right. trace it or uh, cut it out. Right. It'll save right. you a lot of cut between the legs, you know, and uh, save you a lot of work. That would really help for sure. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, and when you when you do that first, I think I described before, like if when when you cut this out, you can turn it ninety degrees and cut the side view out as well, right? Correct. Yes. So if you if you took if you made a bandsaw cut as an example along here. That's a pretty, that's a pretty simple cut, you know, and then you made another cut along here and then taped those back on or glued those uh, very lightly back on. 
then that flat surface would be retained to put on your bandsaw blade again and cut it at a 90 degree angle, uh, at a 90 degree angle, a side view. Right. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's something, yeah. So now, you have a rough out. Yeah, that's right. So one of the, one of the, um, one of the things, uh, many things that I like about this carving is, uh, is the roundness of this. So although you did a really good job of drawing the Santa face here, you, you, you didn't, you didn't um, fall into the trap, if you want, of just cutting the Santa face there. The first thing you did is you cut it all off because you knew that that was going to be round and the beard was going to be round. And I see you left kind of a flat section here that's probably appropriate because you want maybe a bigger nose there. You don't, yeah. want, a, you don't want a pointy nose there. You want some plane there that you can put a good sized nose. So, you know, that's really important to point that out to all of us, because again, we're all human and we see things in two dimensions like this when we're drawing it, but we're trying to carve in three dimensions. And so although, you know, Furtis put all of this detail in on his two dimensional drawing, he knew that that eye, as an example, had to go like three sixteenths of an inch behind where he drew it. And so that had to be curved. So it's a, it's a thing worth um, repeating a few times. And I'm sure, you know, as, as Curtis does this arm as an example and the mitts, he's going to do the, exactly the same thing. The center of the mitts might have a very small flat section, but from about here back in that direction and from about here back in that direction is either gonna be straight or fairly straight on an angle or gently curved right right that's really good now lloyd um did a carving i don't think he he was really listening to the instructions though <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have an eight piece eight inch piece of wood john but i had a four foot <laughs> piece of log around so <laughs> that's good that's four foot <laughs> nice. i had lots of those around <laughs> That's really good. What are you going to do with that now, Lloyd? I'll probably put on the brand or something for Christmas. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I, I liked all the uh, talking you were doing about rounding there. Um, I teach a, a <laughs> talking stick class. And what we use in, in uh, talking sticks is a piece of two by two. And I tell <laughs> the students that we have to carve this so it's disguise it enough so it doesn't look like a two by two. Yeah. And that's yeah. how you get that roundness around it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. But it was fun to do. I enjoyed it. Um, axes and mallets, and yeah, it was good. Yeah. Well, this is this nice is nose. a real interesting one. Yeah, re everything's really good about it, isn't it, John? Nice color. Yeah. Nice yeah. and bright. The, adding the adding cane, the cane. Yeah. The candy cane was uh, on the log. There was a big piece of wood sticking out there, and it was crying out for some sort of a cane yeah. or a walking stick or something. So yeah. I oh, just gave really it the good. Cane. That's really good. I like that a lot. Yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, Murray, are you on tonight? Murray Hinter? I don't know if Murray's on tonight. Yes, well, I'm on. Oh, good. Okay, well, why, why, why don't you just talk about your curving for a minute, Murray? Okay, well, the... the uh... I didn't get too much time to work on it, obviously. Uh, I've been away for the last 10 days, but uh, this is a piece of Aspen. Oh. And it's, uh, it was a little tougher than the basswood, but uh, nevertheless, it's carvable. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I tried to follow uh, John's uh, suggestions. I think I got the, I got the eyes coming back. Uh, Yep. Uh, maybe uh, looking at the side profile, maybe a little more brow. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, it's still come back some more, but uh, you know, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. John, you have any comments? Uh, it's uh, it's coming along. It's uh, the hat. You know, you should bring it more to a point. You know, like you see mine or not? Um, you see my mark? Yeah, just drop it down a bit. Yeah. There you go. You see how yeah. the shape of it? Yours is a little wide in here. I would bring yeah. it more into a point. Yeah, well, I could put a tassel on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So Murray, That's you're good, still though. you're still working on this, Murray. And yes. so you like you might consider like I'm looking here, and again, it's hard to tell from a photo, but this section here looks fairly flat. Yes. It's, not, it's on an angle, but it looks fairly flat. But because you're still working on this, you can bring a lot of roundness to that cheek as an example. So all you'd have to do, and, and you know, you already mentioned the aspen is uh, harder than you expected. But if you can, you know, just cut deeper along this line as an example, the top of his beard, and cut deeper around his nose here. And then that'll give you the depth that you can go from that deep section around to this deep, deep section. Okay, so you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll get okay. a more of a curvature there. So yeah. you might want to do that. Puff it, up. Puff it up a little bit. Yeah. 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 But other than that, I think it looks great. Uh, uh, Murray, I think too, you're uh, on the eyes. You're a little early on the eyes. Um, you want to get most of that roughed out, like you said, the cheeks, the nose, it, before you even attempt the eyes. Like the eyes should be another, you know, uh, you know 10 minutes away. You know what I mean? Like 10 minutes of more roughing out and rounding it off and getting it uh, a basic shape. I don't know, like this little guy here. You want it more before you even tempt the eyes. I don't have, I don't have one already, but. Okay. But you know what well, I mean? So just do yeah, a little not, more uh, roughing it out. Yeah, a little deeper. A little deeper. The yeah. soccer, socket a little deeper. He, I think the right angle is there, John. Just maybe a little yeah. bit oh, deeper, yeah. like you say, right? A little early. Yep. Looks good though, Murray. Yeah, okay. looks good. Okay. And talking about Murray, we have Murray Lincoln here. Now we're getting, we're, we're going to start getting away from necessarily um, John's model of the Santa, but uh, you know, several people sent in uh, projects they're working on that, that we should take a look at. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. Okay. Just on the left-hand side, I don't know sure if you, what you got out of that, but uh, I was doing a series of faces using John's ideas and getting my eyes and nose and so on, just perfect. And I came to the point on the left-hand side as I was working on the head. Uh, the thing Mark described is going gently down one side and then going over the other side and changing grains. All of a sudden, pop, off came the nose. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a little bit of stilted there, but he's got a new nose and it fits. <laughs> <laughs> so the design of it originally was to have, uh, when I had the heads done, then I started to make the idea of what I'm going to do with the body. So I needed a little fatter kind of body. And on the left-hand side, you can see the rough out of that. Uh, I don't know if you included that one slide or not, but that's actually the tail of a duck. A this, wood this carver, yeah, a wood carver in our area passed away. His daughter contacted me, and he was a bird carver. He had probably uh, an apple box full of bodies all roughed out, like cut out of the bandsaw. And some of them have actually started carving. And I have done bird carving in a long time in the past, and I don't like it. I don't do it. I'm finished. I've been delivered of bird carving. <laughs> and so cutting off the rear end of the bird became the body of the elf. Now you see his arm on the left hand in the center picture. Uh, the idea that I had first was in my sketches that he was going to be dragging Santa's great big bag, which was almost as big as he was, with the toys falling out of it and all that kind of thing. Just a little bit of a, a character. So, But his arm out of there and I ran out of time, so I designed a dog to put under his right arm and uh, he's holding the pup, and the pup's actually, as it's carved, is leaning against his belly. And so this took a little while to do. The, I did the burning on it, and then I followed the burning as my pattern to paint into. Uh, the beard is done with some gray, first overall gray covering right down in the crevices, and then dry brushed on the white on the top of it uh, to get about maybe three or four levels, so I got the whiteness that I wanted on the thing. And uh, other than that, it turned out pretty good. I was happy with the eyes this time. But again, carving yeah. small like this, it's not very big. You can see on the right hand or left hand side of the picture, my thumb is half the size of the head. So it is a bit of a problem. Now, my real joy was to make that uh, lantern stick. You can't see it too good in this picture, but it's got a real flame carved inside, not inserted, almost like a ball carving in a cage. Wow. 
So it was one of those little challenges I gave it to myself. That looks really good. Nice. Now nice you, you you uh, you recognize that you needed a change of green direction here, so you yeah. added this arm and probably the other arm. Did you dowel that, or how did you? Yes, a little that? a small one eighth inch dowel into that. Okay. And the actual thing, part of the story, which if you saw the other slides, the other pictures, the left arm is actually the neck of the duck. <laughs> the right arm is another part of the duck that I cut off. <laughs> so, oh, that's really good. Total really contempt. Good. He's got. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, I like the little detail you added with your painting. You did a really nice job down here with these little bells. I think yeah. that really looks smart. It's a touch too. of silver onto the bell, yeah. and then a white a white dot placed on the yeah. silver gives a bit of a reflection to it. Yeah, they look really sharp. Yeah, dogs are very difficult to do, and I don't know if you experienced that with this one, uh, Marie, but I've always found. I've done a few dogs to add to carvings and, and they're, they're difficult enough for me to do that I do a clay figure first. And then I make my carving based off the clay figure because invariably I'm not happy with the dog that I just try to carve. I wish, you know, it was sitting back more forward or more forward. And so with the clay, a good example of good use of clay is you can make this dog and then you can squeeze it down to the ground or to the side or whatever. And, it, and then you have a three-dimensional model to, uh, to carve off of. Because I, I find dogs kind of, you know, just because their hair is long and flowing and all the rest of it, they're kind of hard to carve. He, uh, I carve many dogs because I do the small ones for kids, like the $5 things. Yeah. And uh, he's kind of a take off that. He's a bit fancier and he's got hair all over him. So it's kind of like yeah. a sheep dog and he's got two bead eyes. So that helps that way. Is there another picture here to show or is this the only one? Uh, well, I have your other carvings, but not this carving. Okay, just a, just can I switch to that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to screen stop. this one okay. here, and I'll try it. Okay, I'm going to stop share then. Okay. Okay. All right. So back to Murray's. Okay. Any comments for Murray from the gang here? Murray, is that an elf? Or yeah, it's an elf. Your, uh, it's supposed to be an elf. I think his last name should be Quackwood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That's my neighbor's uh, last name, Quackwood. Oh, is that right? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Doug Quackwood. That's a nice okay, one. Bob, Bob finished a couple other carvings and sent them in. So, Bob, why don't you say a few words That's about good. your your monk? Yeah, I had a it was a little porcelain monk, and uh, so I just tried to duplicate them, and they didn't turn out too bad. Mm. No, it's good. Yeah, it looked real good. Yeah. Now, th this one here looks like, it, you know, that maybe the eyes are a little deeper and the face is a little bit rounder than this. This, I, you know, and again, might just be the photo, but the cheeks look a little flat here. Whereas still this working one, on it, still working on it. Yeah. So you might want to just round it out like you did this one here. But no, those look yeah. really good. Those look good. Thank you. OK, and Mike, are you on tonight? Yes. Mike, why don't you say a little bit? about uh, your carving here. Okay, uh, well, this was, uh, of course, sorry that I'm kind of behind you guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Sort of a month back, but yeah. this was the one where you did the uh, character head with the hat. Right. So I decided, uh, seeing I had a Tilly hat, that I would call this one Mr. Tilly. So uh, <laughs> I uh, had the hat, and I probably overdid the hat, actually, as compared to the carving, perhaps. Um, so and I tried to make a smiley face. Since I took those pictures, I've changed the pupil uh, with a Dremel ball uh, just to make it less intense, sort of he's looking pretty starey in, in, <laughs> in these two shots. But anyway, uh, I uh, used your method about uh, putting the hat on the head and it was, I, I found it uh, scary from oh. all my other carvings <laughs> to cut that head off like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, was I like, understand. oh my God, I got to cut the damn top off his head. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. right. Yeah. But anyway, it worked out pretty well, although I had to go back and forth about a gazillion times, and I think it's still riding too high on the head, perhaps. <laughs> well, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't, I don't know if I'd drop it any lower, because you'd lose the no. eyebrows, you know? Yeah, the eyebrow, they're, yeah, they're sitting on the eyebrow, and actually, yeah. uh, you can't quite tell on his right ear on the other left side. The hat is, I had to gouge the hat out a little bit more just on the brim underneath there to yeah. kind of get it to go... And of course, the next stage will be, uh, I've got to do a little more tidying up and 
and painting. I haven't, of course, started yeah. that. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna try your, uh, your wax uh, with yeah. the burnt sienna yeah. technique, John. I think yeah. that sounds like a great idea. I've already got yeah, all those products. Perfect. And, Very easy. Uh, yeah, and but what you, when John, when you did the oil for the skin skin tone, uh, yeah. were you were using um, a burnt sienna oil paint or? Yeah, oil. Well, you have to use oil. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so because there, because the uh, Watco is is oil, eh? So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, I think this. I think this looks really good, Mike. I think that uh, like you fo you followed John's uh, suggestions on the face very well. I think on this. Um, so some things I like about it is the nose is really prominent. So you, you know, you clearly went on a pretty steep angle back this way to get, uh, get away from any flatness. You know, you went in in a fair amount on the, on the brow here, the bridge of the nose to, you to again, you know, uh, uh, give yourself somewhere to park the eye. Uh, to me, you, you park the eye nicely further back. Um, you know, the ear is nice and big. Um, a, a couple of things that, that I might suggest looking at it is that I, I, I've noticed on my carvings that I can come in a second time and cut more of the eye socket away right by the nose so that the eye is less of an angle going back and a wee bit flatter going across the face. As long as you got that socket deep, if you look at uh, yourself in the mirror or pictures of people's faces, you'll notice that this part of the eye in here is a little deeper than what you have. The, um, the other yeah, that's thing. a really good point, Mark. I totally agree. I even after I figured it was done, I was a little regretful that I carried on carving detail and putting in the lids and the pupil and all that. Yeah, because I realized later, you're totally right. It's not deep enough in inside in those inside sections there. on the inside. The, right the there, outside, yeah. the outside's perfect. But, you know, it wouldn't take much and you wouldn't be losing too much of your detail, Mike, if you just shave that off, you know, and you can use a gouge to do it or a knife the way John does it, but just bring that in. And when you do that and you redraw your eyelids, top and bottom, to so start getting the ball of the eye. When I look at that, it's a great caricature, but I think that I would prefer to see the eyeball itself, the sphere of the eye, a little bit smaller. And because if I, if I look at this picture only, and, and, and the photograph might be wrong, if I were to trace the curve here, you know, I'd have to say that the eyeball, I keep clicking this darn thing, the eyeball is going in its head kind of like that, you know, the size of a softball. Yeah, too you know big. I mean? Too big. Yep. And so, yep, you big. know, if you took your knife and just cut a little deeper on the upper eyelid and the lower yeah. eyelid, and then started, you know, from about here, shaving back to that, it'll ob automatically go from like baseball size to ping pong ball size, right? And, and I, think it, I think it would it, it would improve an already really good carving here. Okay, thank you. This, that's a really good idea. And as okay. you say, I can still do that. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. The, the other thing that, uh, that I'd suggest, and you did a really good job of the shape of the year. And I like the size of the year. I like caricatures with big ears, guys with big ears, right? But when I look at it this way, I also like to see um, almost like car door ears. Like not only are they big, but they're sticking out, right? And you could do that very easily here. When you look at, and, and it might just be the shadows on the photo, but this, this part of the ear looks very prominent <laughs> to me. Like it's sticking out from the face. But when you feel your ear or look at your ear, there isn't a line there. Like there isn't a line there. It, it's, it goes smoothly into your face, right? So you could take your knife or a, a gouge and you could start about here and just taper everything right to the face and just remove that line. And that automatically, because you're taking that section in, it automatically pulls this section <coughs> out and all of a sudden your ear is sticking out more, okay? Yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah. It, it might be something you want to look at, and, and it, I think oh, it would yeah. just make it a little bit more fun to look at. Oh, yeah, I really appreciate the suggestions. Yeah, good. Mark, uh, just uh, one suggestion for Mike, too. That I've been working a lot on the mouth part. The photo on the right side shows that the bottom lip is bigger on the closer to the face size than the middle of the lip. It's almost like he's got a can canker sore there or something. So uh, yeah. using that, so you're when you do the lips, the major part of the lip to show is the center 
two thirds. Right. It vanishes into the the face by just chiseling that a little bit off right there. Yeah, right there, Mark. So you're 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 saying, Murray, you could smooth this right out and and not lose yeah. anything in the carving. Actually, at all. just get rid of that lower part of it. It would it would go right into the side into the cheek part without no problem. Yeah, yeah that, well, that's, that's a really good idea. Yeah, that that's look, great. Yeah, good. yeah, that's okay. something I could easily do too. Super. Nice job, Mike. That's good. That's where a Thanks. beard helps to cover the mustache. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, now Murray, I think he started off with Christmas theme here, but got uh, got sidetracked. <laughs> well, it's, it's Christmas. He got a red bandana on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this character has just been real fun to do. As I began practicing some of the facial things, messing up eyes, covers up with the, with sunglasses. I didn't know I carved uh -huh. them on there. They weren't applied to it, and so he is bald. He's an older fellow that's trying to be young. And what actually started off with uh, getting this character car character carving going, I had this motorcycle I bought a number of years ago at the CNE, one of the um, went around the world kind of displays. There was some somebody from Vietnam and made this motorcycle all out of wood bits. So now I've got a biker to go with it. Ah, very good. He's got tattoos on his arms and snakes yeah. wrapped around it. And, yeah. And a happy biker because he's got a bug in his teeth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. And also, I should have mentioned a major feature on the thing is that his, uh, I, I did his pants uh, very, very tight by, and also uh, putting a coat of uh, uh, a matte finish on it, then giving a sanding and getting it super smooth. And then I applied the matte finishes to the upper section down to the bottom of his belly and also masked off his boots. So his skin tight leather pants are shiny. Yeah, that's really good, really good. Now, did you use uh, straight pins down here for all the rivets? No, they're just, uh, I've got a little uh, leather uh, tool. It's got about four different sizes of- A uh, uh, little punch. Punches, like, and so you yeah. just put the punch on the thing and give it a good turn, pushing it in, and you get ahead of the pin size or whatever right. size you want. Yeah, very nice. And how did you do the tattoos? The boots? The tattoos. Oh, the tattoos with, with the uh, burning tool, with the, with the, with the fine tool. tip. Okay. And actually what I've done is uh, what helped on getting the lettering and so on looking uh, reasonable on the thing is to burn the entire uh, carving before you start putting paint on. Then when you paint it, the paint dries and you can see the burn marks through the paint, which then you paint over with a, a tip of a toothpick. Very good, yeah. It's a tighter that way. His back, have you got a picture of his back there? It's the best part. No, the th these are the two I put on, sorry, Mark. Instead of saying Sons of Anarchy, which is the typical sign of the motorcycles ride, it says Sons of Arthritis, Ibuprofen chapter. Oh, that's good, that's good. Uh, that's good, that was a really good carving, real fun carving. Now, the, um, the tattoos, I'll just tell you something that I've done in the past. Um, when I, when I've had like a flesh color or a linen color like that, and I wanted to put something on it, I'll tell you what I did is I did a newspaper once and I wanted to put articles in the newspaper or, or make it look like there were pictures or articles in the newspaper. I painted it with, uh, the acrylic, uh, you know, flesh colored or linen colored, uh, paint. And then once it was completely dried, um, I used a soft, very sharp lead pencil. And I applied all of the articles from the newspaper. I could, I was able even to draw little tiny pictures, like photos from the newspaper. You, that would have really worked well for your tattoos as well. So you put the lead on with just with your lead pencil. Then of course you don't smudge it, but um, then you put your matte finish over that, and it and that oil-based matte finish then seals that lead, and it'll never rub off. So that's another way to do it that you might want to try someday. Great. Okay. And Murray, these were uh, these were your character carver carvings as well. Uh, yeah, the, the elf is the one second from the right, mm -hmm. and as it comes out of it. So I worked on a, a, a female face, was, but that was really a fun one. I was looking at something you did, and then yeah. took it a bit further. And uh, again, it's just trying to emphasize certain features. Looking at the YouTube videos, you can get quite a few different designs of comical looking women or sexy looking women or really old old hags 
And uh, they, I don't know if there's uh, three of them will get bodies yet. The woman might, but the other two are going to be so big. The yeah. bodies will have to stand about uh, 14 inches high to make it proportional. Yeah. These are really good. John, do you want to make any comments? No, I like the one on the far right. The, yep. uh, yeah. Good smile. Yeah. The Kevin hair goes over his one eye, too, on that one on the right, the fat fellow there. Yeah. Uh, That's what I was talking about, the smile and the mustache. Yeah, From the, the eyes. Yeah, the hair is underneath his brim. Uh, the brim of his hat comes down over his uh, right eye. Just about yeah. covers it. Nice. Yeah, I would have made the same comment, John. I was going to comment on this one here. So this, this, they're all really nice, Murray. This caricature head, I think, is like a a, a ribbon winning caricature head. It's, yeah. it's, it's got all the elements that John described to you. It's got the sunken eyes. It's got one brow a little higher than the other. It's got a real bulbous nose, the big lower lip, the smile on the face. Typically, I go with a large ear. You went with a small ear, but you made sure it poked way out. You know, the hair down over his eyes almost, uh, a rough beard down here, the small hat. If you take that, Murray, and you put it on a little short, fat caricature and put them in front of a barbecue or something that you've you've got a you've got a ribbon winning caricature there this is this is unique and really well done it's once you do the head you have fun doing that and then moving on and thinking geez i gotta do a body it's just too much work yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i i i wouldn't lose this one marie because this is the start of a, a really good caricature yeah. it's like a hobo it could be a hobo could be a whole bowl. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really well done. Yeah. Okay. Any comments for Murray? Okay. I want to show you the one that I did and I started with what John's concept was. And I ended up making more like a, um, a mall Santa, like a, a friendly kind of mall Santa rather than a father Christmas. Um, and I added, you know, as I do, I added a lot of detail, but I wanted to start by um, showing you how I approached my carvings and something again, just to hark back on what we've already talked about. So I just made this little schematic. So if you can imagine, this is your block of wood that you're working with, and this is gonna be the back of your sculpture. And this plane here will be the front of your sculpture. Every one of us tend to do this. We tend to say, okay, I've got to round this thing out to make a body. So I'm gonna take a wee bit off of this corner, that corner, this corner, and the back corner here. And we end up with four flat surfaces. And it's nothing to be embarrassed about or apologize about. It's what we all do. And even after you've been carving for 20 years, these things, you'll still do that and you'll correct yourself. And so what you got to try to remind yourself to do is you're not after this. You're after this, where you've drawn a reference line down your block of wood on the side. You've drawn a reference line down your block of wood on the front. Those reference lines don't have to be in the center. So if I was doing a person as an example, and this was the front, this reference line I might put through that person's shoulder. And if you just stand, sit straight up in your chair, you'll see your shoulder as well to the, your back. It's nowhere near your front and it's nowhere near the center. So that reference line would go to the, towards the back. But when you do the carving, you got to recognize that wherever you put those reference lines, there's not going to be any flat section there. You're going to go from that one reference line and it's going to be curved, not necessarily like round because not every carving we make is round. It's going to be curved until you get to that other reference line. So if this here reference line is the side that is on your shoulder, it's going to be further back and you're going to curve that from the shoulder all the way to the front. You're going to have a tighter curve because it's back here around that corner, but it's going to curve all the way to that center line. Now, if you remember the picture that Furtis showed um, when he was draw when he was doing his um, his current Santa, you know, he did that. Right. So when he was he's rounded the head and the beard was well rounded. Now he left a little band, maybe, you know, maybe three sixteenths of an inch here where he wanted a little bit more flatness so that he could put a, a nose, a bulbous nose. He didn't want a pointy nose on Santa. And so you got to think about that. But generally, generally, you're going to be going all the way from this section, all or reference line, all the way to the other reference line. Now, 
now you, you'll see in a minute the the carving that I did. I put I, I ended up wanting to do it for my granddaughter for Christmas, and so I wanted the Santa holding a, a Christmas stocking. And so right away, Santa's mitts, just like Furtis's um, drawing, Santa's mitts were out in front of him, right? So that was going to be the front of my carving. So, so just where you're sitting right now, like just fold your hands over your chest, right? One hand over the other and take a look down and see what you see is flat. Like even, even your knuckles aren't going to be flat. They come to a point. You know, so when you, when you think of, if this reference line is the back of your elbow and this reference line is your hands folded on your chest, this isn't even going to be round for that section. It's going to be fairly straight. You're going to put a little curve, but, you know, as I look down at my arms, I can look from my elbow right to the tip of my knuckle and it's straight. Not even my wrist is bent. Okay. And so again, that's what you're after. You're after, you're, you're trying to avoid as much as you can any flatness in your carving, okay? Now, John, you've harped about this as well. Do you, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I, I have an example after when you, uh, well, I'll show you like the whales. That's how I teach um, roundness and how to get to roundness. Yep. I, I'll take a little whale like this. Can you see, is it okay? You can see it good? Yep. Okay. And I'll draw a line down the middle of the whale. This just gets people into thinking about how to get things round. And I'll, I'll split this whale in half. This is uh, probably three quarters of an inch thick. And I'll split this in half like that. <clears throat> now to get, let me make my appearance. Now from, from there to there, that line, I want, I want to match that line to that line. So if I only go this far, I won't be able to touch that line. But, and I won't touch this line. So I got to go deeper and cut that off until now well, I'm, I'm hitting that line there. So I stop and I go to this line and I stop there and I just fall all the way around. Now this whale is flat on the top. This little guy is flat on the top, but it, it's getting rounder. And I go do the same thing to the bottom, cut down. Now, if my knife doesn't touch that line, I'm not done yet. So I got to keep on going until it touches that line. That way, that way I know that that whale is getting rounder it's almost so i do the let me see do the head at the top of the head here and just to to your point mark about the roundness i just want to uh this is a good way to practice see this is it could be an arm it could be a leg you know it's you split Mark, the leg and the arm in half. To interject something here, Mark. Could you turn the share screen off for a minute so you'll be a bigger? Yeah, tell us, a, go over that again a little bit, John Paul. Okay. Sorry, buddy. I, I couldn't see what I was doing here. No, you're fine. We're okay. just so small on that little picture there. Okay. So <clears throat> from, I, I draw a line halfway on that uh, three quarter or three quarters of an inch or whatever it is. And I put a, a line halfway on this whale. I divide in half, all the way around, divide in half. Now this could be an arm, this could be a leg. I do the same thing. I wanna, if I, if I cut this off like that, if I stop there, I'm not, I'm not reaching that line. I won't reach this line. So I keep on going till I reach that line. So I know now that it's rounding. I keep on going. I keep on going until it, it reaches that middle line over here. And then I continue this right on and smooth it, take the saw marks off. Just keep on going like that, nice cuts. And it's starting to get round, rounded head, right? But that could be, that could be this whale here is gonna be, it's gonna be that whale. 
Okay, that's good, John. So that's uh, that's a good way, like an arm. Yeah. Scan his arm, draw a line down the middle, draw a line here, and reach those pencil marks. Yeah. Well, it's just like so. What John describes is exactly this, right? So if he hadn't yeah. gone to that middle line and cut through here, he would have had a flat section there. If he had only right. taken this section, and we all do that. We all do that. So you know, it's a good thing to practice getting to those reference lines. Now, another thing that I always do for myself, because it's hard for me to um, always think of that, I rough my carving out first. And so I, I had a general sense I wanted, you know, John's kind of design with the robe and the, and the hat, but I wanted him to look more like a, a mall Santa. And so I, I mentioned to you guys before that I rough, tend to rough things out. You can do it with a knife, but I tend to rough things out with a typhoon bit. And that's that really prickly uh, carbide tip bit that you see for Fordham tools and Dremels. So very quickly, like within 20 minutes, you, you can rough something from a two dimensional picture into three dimensions. And so why do I like this? Because you're taking a little bit off at a time, you can see the three dimensions. You know you want a rim around, or a, yeah, a furry rim, I guess, around the hat. So you make sure you, you pencil that in and you make sure that as you take wood away, you pencil it in again, take a little more wood away, pencil it in again until you end up seeing the Santa in a sense. So long before you get to any detail, you have the three dimensional picture to work against. You're no longer working against two dimensions of the, the surface of the block. So at this point, you take your pencil and you say, okay, I, I want that to be the beard line, very crisp. And now you dig your knife into there, just like John described. I want this to be the top of the beer line, beard line. You dig your knife into there. And now you know that between that line and that line, you want a nice bulky beard, nice curve. And so you curve from one line to the other. Okay, so, yeah. so, so this is another way of um, get, getting at this notion, okay, that you're trying to you're trying to draw something on a flat plane and turn it into three dimensions. You can, you can start by just eyeballing it with a few pencil marks, making a roughed in three dimensional model of what you're after, knowing that you're gonna be putting the detail in later. So you can see, I put a little, a little flat for a, a pocket here. And so now that this was nice and rounded with my knife, there's nothing flat about that. that. Now, when I draw that in, it's on that rounded surface. It's, there's no way that that little detail is going to be flat. Okay. Everybody understand that? Okay. And so this is what I ended up with. So you can see here that everything's rounded. I added a lot of, uh, you know, the wrinkles later, but I wanted to show you this picture because I want to talk to you guys about details. So I mentioned to you before, adding little details really enhance your carving. And the, the carvings that you guys have shown tonight, you can still add little details that'll just make it more interesting. So these little buttons here are nothing more than little brass decorative nails that I got at Home Depot. So you can buy, you know, for $3, a little, a little case of maybe 30 of them or 20 of them, okay? They're just little brass nails, drill a hole, a pot, cut off the end of the brass nail so there's only like a quarter of an inch or so, drive it in with a little bit of epoxy, it stays there forever, okay? Um, you can see that I added the stocking and I'm gonna come back to the stocking in a minute because I wanna show you how that's made. But little things like candy cane. So candy cane was just, a, was just um, copper household wire. This candy cane here, you can see, I twined two pieces of copper wire together, household wire, right? Um, and, and then you just drill a hole and you epoxy that in place. Um, at, before you twine it together, I'd suggest you take a little sandpaper and just sand off the varnish so that the, the paint adheres to it well. This is just light, light wire that you'd get like 18 gauge wire, like a baling wire type of thing. And you'd, I just wrapped it around the shaft of a, um, a small screwdriver, wrap this around the same screwdriver just to get that curve. This one fully around the screwdriver shaft and all of a sudden you have glasses, paint them gold and you have glasses. Um, I followed John's idea. I really like the way the John's beard and mustache looks. So that, those are just knife cuts, following the knife cuts, a little bit of wood burning. 
I used a gouge for this just to differentiate between the two. So these are just little gouge marks through here, okay? But it, it's the, it's the, um, it's the uh, stocking that I think that, that makes this carving. So he's holding a little stocking. My granddaughter's name is Ada. And so you can see here in the top of the stocking, I carved a few little presents, a little teddy bear. The candy cane is there. The, the stocking took no time at all to make it all. And, and I'd like to see you guys give that a try if you find you have some time and you wanna play with that. The little tag is roof flashing. So you know the, the light metal roof flashing you, you'll find on, um, on soffits and uh, uh, you'll find it uh, on, on the uh, shingles of your, uh, your roof. Uh, that's just cut away from a little piece of flashing. It's tiny, it's smaller than your fingernail on your baby finger, and then just paint it up with her name on it, okay? So, so what I'd like to do is just take uh, the last 15 minutes or so and just show you how to go through making the stocking. And if, you're, if your little Santa's uh, already got his hands out in front of it, you can have him holding it. If it's not got it out in front of it, you can just have the stocking leaning up against the base of the Santa, right? So it, just something to play with and just and to, I find that these little details are fun and they enhance your carving. Okay. Okay, so let, uh, let me just kind of walk you through this Christmas ornament. So that's, that's how I started. Uh, you can see the dimensions on there. It's pretty small, two and three quarter inches high, <coughs> uh, an inch in width. You can, you can use this drawing, you can draw your own. Uh, I did bring it to a bandsaw to cut, cut it off, cut it out rather. Just this view I cut out because it's so thin, you don't have to worry about cutting the side view. But this dotted line, I cut, that was my bandsaw cut. And so I just left a lot of material there so that I could, I could carve in some parcels and a little book here and a, and a teddy bear. Okay, everybody? And then that's the first step. So you just start rounding it. And just as John described with the whale, you know, you can, you can put a line down the side of the stocking. You can put a line down the front of the stocking. And just as John described, make sure that you cut from that line, curve it all the way to the next line, leaving no flat spots. And so you'll, you'll end up front and back having something that starts to look like a, like a foot or a stocking, right? And then just as I was showing you with, first of all, having the three-dimensional model of, of the Santa, now that you have a three-dimensional um, stocking here, you can put in this lower line this lower line of the stocking. And so I just, I just drew in, okay, there's the lower line. And then you cut it in. So now you just, you cut that in uh, with a straight cut, stop cuts up to that line. I beveled it in a little bit, you know, thinking that there, there might be a wrinkle there type of thing. So, so I've removed a little bit of wood from the stocking here to make that line pronounced. And at the same time, I drew in the top line. So this is the front of the stocking. And this is this top line right here, okay? On the back, I kind of thought to myself, well, if that's, if that's gonna be hanging, that portion of that stocking is gonna be pulling up. So I just made a little bit of a V there and a little bit of a V here with my pencil. And then I cut all of that out. So the top is now cut out with a, just a straight cut in and then uh, using it as a stop cut, coming in at a bevel and my, my knife stops with a click every time as I hit that stop cut. But you can see I'm still leaving a lot of flesh up here because I'm not sure exactly what those boxes are gonna look like, the presents are gonna look like. Did the same at the back. Okay, so exactly the same thing at the back. Then I thought, well, where would the wrinkles go? Well, if it's hanging from the back, there'd be a wrinkle going in this direction. There'd be a wrinkle going in this direction. Depending on what boxes and candies and goodies are in the stocking, there might be a wrinkle here and a wrinkle there. And that's one of the fun things about this is that it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth stocking because you know what a Christmas stocking looks like. It's full of junk, right? And it's very angular. And so I started cutting in little angles, pretty deep wrinkles to, to make that look like a, a Christmas stocking. Um, and then I started... Um, dealing with the top here. And so I just put in geometrical shapes. So I just put a little box here, box I put a larger here, box. A larger box. Um, th this is kind of a book or a magazine. So I've got it curled around a little bit. 
Um, I'll bring your attention to this here wrinkle. So I had this, this wrinkle uh, initially. One of the things I really like when I see caricatures of garments and things, I like to see a second wrinkle that comes up like a T. It just looks really sharp to me. And, it, and, it, and to me, it makes it look like fabric. So, so I'll often have one wrinkle come down and then I'll make the next wrinkle right into it and bevel that wrinkle as well. So you can see it kind of looks, it kind of looks cool. I continued just working on the shapes. So I finished this shape to look kind of cubical, right? And then I made a little bit of a larger cube here, left this here left pretty this fleshy, here pretty fleshy. Uh, because I wanted uh, because that. I wanted that. Uh, so I'm hearing an so echo I'm again. An echo John, there, is your iPad there, back on by any chance? There we go. And so I wanted this pretty fleshy because I wanted to put that, um, that teddy bear in. And then I made a little teddy bear. And I, I was thinking of doing the whole body, but I ran out of wood. So um, I just put the teddy bear's head there. Now, you, you know that I'm a proponent of adding things like gluing things in. So I could have drilled that out as a whole, made a little teddy bear, tapered the end and stuck it in there, right? I could have fit one in there. And so that's something you might wanna think about if you try this. Then I took the wood burning tool and because the wood grain is going in this direction, it's always a little difficult to work at the end of the fibers. It always gets a little bit fibrous in here, regardless of how sharp your knife is. A little bit of a wood burning tool in there just burns those fibers away and makes it nice and clean. You also see here that, that I, I just put some lines of the pages between the book covers if you want, right? And let's see. Um, to, to make the, um, the fluffy part or the furry part of the stocking, um, you know, John has a really good way of doing it with a knife. I, I use a small gouge like this. And so you can see it's just running it up and down. Um, you know, I, I tended not to run right from the bottom to the top. The, you know, the grain, because the grain of the wood uh, would have, if I had started here at the top and come down, I would have chipped grain away. So I started about the middle, chipped away, and then started again about the middle and chipped down. And it, it had a nice effect. Um, Lee Valley has these little brass hooks and in different sizes. This one, I think, has about an eighth of an inch um, diameter on the inside. You get about a hundred of these for five dollars or six dollars or seven dollars. And so, you know, go to Lee Valley, you can get these and that's a nice way to hang up ornaments. And so you can see this is the way to look like. This is what it looked like rather. So the ornament just got screwed into the back. You can epoxy that in if you want as well. Uh, I took that little copper wire and made a candy cane and I'll eventually, you know, when I paint it, I'll paint that candy cane striped. But it, it's a cute little ornament and uh, it's something that will will hang on a tree if you want to do that with it. But if you also want to just do it to enhance your current Santa Claus carving, um, you know, Furtis, you're still doing one where the hands are out front. He could be holding something like this. For those that don't have the hands out front, you could just lean it up against the, the Santa's cloak and... Uh, and have it there. Okay, any questions on any of that? Okay. Well, if there's no, if there are no comments there are or no questions, comments or questions. Um, we'll we'll kind of leave that with you, and uh, you know, continue to work away on your Santas. Send photos in to me when uh, when they're complete or, or when you'd like to show a progress. And, uh, and if you want to, um, to try this little uh, Christmas ornament, the stocking, um, Murray's going to put the whole thing up on video so you'll be able to see it again there. Did you want to critique on your carving? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, on, on which one? The, the <laughs> stocking? No, no, the Santa. Okay. I think his ears are too big. Well, let me take a look. Here. <laughs> let me take a look here. Now, you be careful what you say about Santa. You may be getting nothing. Yeah, his ears are too big. You're right. Yeah, they are too big. I never thought of that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's good, Mike. Okay, guys, hey guys and gals, thank, gals you thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, hope and, you enjoyed uh, tonight's, enjoy uh, tonight's um, presentation. And presentation. we'll see you, see you again in a month. Thanks, Mark. That was great. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Very nice, Mark. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Mark. That was good. Thanks, okay. John.